Today we're going to look at how to find antiderivatives of functions of another function. Now this technique typically goes by the name substitution or change of variables, but really it comes from the chain rule. Now the method of substitution comes from the differentiation method called the chain rule. Let me just remind you how the chain rule works. If I take the derivative with respect to x of a function f of another function g of x, then the first thing that you do is differentiate the f function to get f prime, evaluate that at g of x, and then multiply times the derivative of the function that f is being applied to. In other words, multiply by the derivative of g of x. So in other words, the derivative of f of g of x is, is f prime evaluated at g of x times g prime of x. Let's do an example. For example, if I wanted to find the derivative with respect to x of 1 plus x cubed to the 1 half power, the outer function here is the function being raised to the 1 half power. To differentiate that, I bring down the 1 half, I reduce the exponent by 1, and then I multiply by the derivative of the function inside, the 1 plus x cubed. When I differentiate 1, that goes to 0, and the derivative of x cubed, I bring down the exponent, so I get 3 x, and I reduce the exponent by 1. So I get 3 x squared. Now in order to turn this chain rule into an anti-differentiation rule, all I have to do is take the antiderivative of both sides. That tells me that the antiderivative with respect to x of f prime of g of x, g prime of x, equals f of g of x. So now that we have our rule for anti-differentiating using the chain rule, let's apply it to our example. Now that we've derived our formula, let's use it to find this particular antiderivative. Here we're trying to find the antiderivative of x sine of x squared over 2. Remember our formula. The antiderivative with respect to x of f prime of g of x times g prime of x equals f of g of x. So in order to use this formula, we need to identify which pieces of the thing that we're anti-differentiating come from f, f prime, g, and g prime. Well, our f prime is always the function that's on the outside of the function of a function. Here we have sine of x squared over 2, and so the outside function is sine. So that will be our f prime. f prime is sine here, which makes g of x the function that's inside the outer function. In this case, g equals x squared over 2. Once we have f prime and g, we can find f and g prime pretty easily. If f prime is sine, that means that f is negative cosine, the antiderivative of sine. If g is x squared over 2, then differentiating tells us that g prime is 2x over 2, where I got the 2x by bringing this exponent of 2 down in front and reducing the exponent by 1. Well, the 2 in the numerator and the denominator just cancel, and so we're left with g prime equals x. So our formula tells us that the antiderivative with respect to x of sine of x squared over 2 times x this is our f prime, this is our g, this is our g prime, just equals f of g of x. In this case, f is negative cosine, so we have negative cosine 
of x squared over 2. If you're unsure that you used the formula correctly, a good way to check is to differentiate. In order to differentiate properly, you're going to have to use the chain rule. When we differentiate negative cosine of x squared over 2, we first differentiate the negative cosine part to get sine. And then we repeat what's inside, the x squared over 2, and then we multiply times the derivative of the part inside. Again, the derivative of x squared over 2 is just x. And so the chain rule tells us that when we differentiate negative cosine of x squared over 2, we get sine of x squared over 2 times x. And so we get back what we started with. Now there are more difficult examples that we can tackle with this type of problem. Let's look at an example. So now let's consider another example. Suppose we're trying to find the antiderivative of e raised to the negative square root of x power divided by square root of x. In order to apply our chain rule for anti-differentiation, we need to establish what is f prime and what is g. Remember our rule, the antiderivative of f prime of g of x, g prime of x, is f of g of x. Now, when we have a function of another function, like we do here, with e being raised to a function of x, the outermost function is our f prime. In this case, f prime is a function which takes its argument and raises e to that power. Now, when we anti-differentiate that function, the exponentiation function, we just get the function back. So if f prime is e raised to a power, f is also e raised to a power. The inside function, then, is the function that's being applied to the x. So in this case, g is negative square root of x. And again, once we know g, just apply your differentiation rules in order to find g prime. g prime equals, well, when you're dealing with square roots or cube roots or something like that, it's better to write this in terms of x raised to a power. In this case, the square root is just x raised to the power of 1 half. Now when I differentiate, I bring the 1 half out in front, so I have negative 1 half x, and I reduce the exponent by 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Of course, negative 1 half is the same as raising x to the 1 half power and putting it in the denominator. So what we get is negative 1 over 2 square root of x. Now there's a wrinkle with this problem that we didn't have with the last problem. Note that when I multiply f prime of g of x times g prime of x here, I get the following. f prime of g of x is e raised to the negative square root of x power, and then g prime is 1 over negative 2 square roots of x. I was interested in the antiderivative of just e to the negative square root of x over square root of x. Fortunately, we can still use this method. The antiderivative of e to the negative square root of x over negative 2 square root of x equals f of g of x. So e to the negative square root of x. Now, because I'm interested in e to the negative square root of x over square root of x, and not e to the negative square root of x over negative 2 square root of x, I'll just multiply both sides of this equation by negative 2. And so I found the answer that the antiderivative of e to the negative square root of x over square root of x equals negative 2 e to the negative square root of x.